David Halpern is a senior fellow at United Republic and a writer for their Republic Report blog. You have a great new piece out called Five Reasons Mitt Romney Would Be the First Corporation Elected President. Uh, he said corporations are people. He's being funded by corporations. He has uh, this Bain Capital kind of uh, uh, vulture capital corporation, which he has made so much money from the loss and destruction of companies from. Does the average voter at this point, in your opinion, realize the connection here between Mitt Romney and these, uh, th th this corporate activity that is not beneficial to the average person, or are they still kind of not in the know on this topic? I think the average voter has a sense that maybe Mitt Romney is somewhat sheltered, somewhat elitist, kind of a country club guy, um, and that maybe he doesn't really understand their problems. And I think that might actually be a legitimate concern, but what I don't think they're really aware of is how much Mitt Romney seems to be blurring the lines and not care that he's blurring the lines between public service and private profit for Mitt Romney and his associates. And that's what I really try to write about in the piece, not the caricature, but the specifics of ways that Mitt Romney is really just seems to be almost a human corporation in terms of how much his, the, the money making of Mitt Romney, his family and his associates seem to be tied to the fate of his presidential campaign. Well, one of the interesting things is for a while now, we've been hearing from Mitt Romney and the Mitt Romney supporters that uh, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons he would be a good president is because of his so-called success in the private sector and his CEO experience. Let's assume we buy in that he's had that success. What evidence do we have, or I guess, do we have evidence that being a CEO type guy makes you a good president? Do we have any presidents we can point to? Not really. Um, we, I certainly think it is a legitimate point. If you're a good manager, you can get things done and you can inspire people and you can achieve goals. Those are all wonderful things for being president. His specifics of running Bain Capital were really about let's take over a company and see if we can make money off it. One way to make money off it is by making the enterprise profitable. And that sort of seems to me to relate to how you might run the country as president. But other means are just how do we loot the company's assets and get it to declare bankruptcy. The goal of Bain Capital was to make money for Bain Capital, not so much to build a prosperous economy for the country. And I think that's a problem. If he sees management of Bain as management of the country, then things happen like, oh, we'll just let the auto industry, US, US auto industry fail because that's the most efficient thing we can do from the perspective of management. But that might not be the best thing from the perspective of auto workers, auto workers, families, people in, in the state of Michigan whose economy depends on a thriving auto industry. So I think it, it, his sort of narrow approach to what he did in his business doesn't necessarily translate uh, to, to being a great CEO or a great president for the United States. Well, it was incredible because we just got these job numbers, which were um, less, uh, you know, less than perfect, uh, for lack of a better term. And Mitt Romney so quickly came out and said, I would, want, uh, I would create 500,000 jobs a month, something that's happened five times over the last 50 years. And he also pointed to his, his, his background as an indication that he really cares about American jobs. But we found out the 9-11 flag pins he touted were made in China. He keeps his own money in the Cayman Islands, certainly not supporting American bankers' jobs. And again, back to Bain Capital, a lot of the money he made came through the elimination of jobs through managed bankruptcies. But how, does the, how can President Obama best impart that fact, these facts, onto voters without seeming like he's just, uh, without negatively affecting the perception of his campaign as a negative campaign? Well, I, let me stress that United Republic is um, nonpartisan and that I, we're, I'm my, in my current role, I'm not trying to help any candidate. I'm trying to point to things for the public um, that they ought to consider, especially the increasing corruption of Washington. No, and to, and that, to that point, I guess my question is, given that we believe that these facts exist about Mitt Romney, is there a way for his political opponent, Barack Obama, to discuss those without appearing to be making ad hominem attacks, so to speak? I think these are legitimate issues. And let me mention one that I write about in the article. Um, Solomir Capital is a company that uh, Mitt Romney's money started. He put the initial $10 million in. It's run by his son, Tag Romney, and by a gentleman who's actually also the finance director of the Romney campaign. And it's, it reminded me of the movie Bob Roberts. They're running a presidential campaign, but they're also trying to make money. 
They're investing in companies. They're they're giving clients opportunities to invest in companies. Right. And some of the same people that they are trying to that they are doing business with are also Romney donors. So they're like the idea is, gee, even if Romney isn't elected, we can keep our enterprise going and make money. And it's just another example of how they are blurring the boundaries. And and beyond that, so many Romney donors are people who stand to to make money from Romney being elected president. He's out on the trail saying. They say, well, what do you what are you going to do about higher education? He says, well, there's a wonderful school in Florida, Full Sail University, which is you know shows how to keep costs down and build a better model for higher education. Full Sail University, extremely expensive for profit college, has a very mixed record. Many students there do not get jobs out of it. Some do, but it's not really the future of higher education. It's a very expensive and and, and probably a bad model for higher education. But worse than that, the owners of Full Scale uni- Full Sail University are Romney donors. They stand to benefit from a Romney presidency. He's not only taking their money, but he's out praising them on the trail without telling people that he's supporting them. He is basically sort of taking a cluster of corporations who are his donors and also doing business with this company, Solomir, and saying, you know, we're all just going to come in together. And my concern is you have a president who doesn't see any problem with the idea of all the donors kind of being connected to the campaign and then coming in and doing well because that's what they've all been doing before. The White House is not a business opportunity. The White House is the trust of the American people and, and an opportunity to solve problems and work together with the American people to solve problems. And I, it seems to me Romney sees it as more of the same, just another way to use his networks to get everybody rich and make money. Right, and my producer, actually a, a, a somewhat proud graduate of Full Sail University. You should hear the stories this guy has. It's, uh, it's quite, quite remarkable what goes on down there, I'll say. Well, my friend teaches at a for-profit college uh, that deals with some of the same stuff that Full Sail teaches. He's a wonderful teacher, and and I know that people, his students get jobs. There are good programs in for pro- in the for-profit sector, but many of them are just cynical ripoffs. As President Obama very forcefully said last week with our troops, or the week before, stood up with our troops and said, "We have to watch out for these predatory for-profit colleges." Mitt Romney said the opposite. He said these for-profit colleges are the future. All right, David Halpern, Senior Fellow at United Republic and writer for the Republic Report blog. Uh, Great to talk to you, David. Thank you so much for having me, David.